Hello my viewers and welcome to this exciting lesson in Revit. In this lesson, I just want to teach you, you know, the fastest method you can use to create or to, to, to model your 3D river in Revit. In this method, you are going to use the saved, you know, river cages, which we have in an external file. Of course, you are going to learn on how you can save those in an external file, okay, and how you can reuse them over and over within your projects, okay? So now, the way these river cages are created and saved is such a way that you can reuse them for any size of that particular structural element. So as long as if it's, it's the base and you want it to be, you know, configured in this way, the size doesn't matter. These are parametric. So you can see that I just imported these, you know, river cages, okay? From the file, which is a file which is saved on the desktop, if I just call, you know, within my desktop there, I've saved these files, they are right there. So these files can be saved, can be shared with anyone, you know, you feel like saving with. So if I go back there, these are the files, as I've mentioned, these are parametric and you can do this for any structural element. Just make sure that you remember the principle of constraints. If you want to know that principle, make sure that you check the card above where I taught on how you can use, you know, the constraints. In this lesson, I'll show you on how you can save and reuse these 3D packages. Now, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please make sure that you subscribe and turn on the bell notification. You motivate me to do more and more if you do that. And for anyone who is interested in learning Revit, make sure that you check the links in the description. I have some good courses there where you are going to learn a lot of things. So check the links there. You might be interested. So without wasting much of your time, let's get started in this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is to just go to, you know, to this file. This is where I'll be creating, you know, the 3D river. Instead of cutting, you remember from the other lessons, what is being taught, of course, on YouTube, you see that you have to cut section here and there in place. And, you know, you, you, you spent, you know, uh, an, uh, you know, a bit of time. But if you save your cages, okay, you are going to do it in seconds. All right, so you see, as I say, these cages are parametric, so you can see that the size will not matter, the height will not matter. You can see we have different size for the bases, even the columns, some of them are different, but we use the same cages and they're parametric, they'll adapt without the problem. Okay, so this can be done again for any member, like the beams, okay, the slabs and everything. Just make sure that you follow this tutorial and should be able to create your own cages according to your standard and save them in an external file and reuse them over and over. Okay, if you are to do this in your company, I can assure you your boss will be impressed and you'll be promoted. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is to show you how to reuse, you know, these cages first of all. So what I would do, if I just show you what is down here under the groups, we don't have anything here. We don't have the groups there. So now let me import these, you know, cages. Just go to insert right there and go to load as a group. Then make sure that you go to where you've saved those cages. On the desktop, that's where I saved them. I'll just double click and I'll just start with this one, the starter bars. I open it. Okay, and then just click on OK. So I have the starter bars as a group. If I go to groups, then model, you see that it's imported right there. Then I'll do the same and load the other ones. Okay, making sure that you go to the right folder, pick the, you know, the, the cage that you want to load in, click on OK. As you can see, it has loaded. From there, you can see it load as a group. Just do the same and make sure that you have everything. Click open. Unfortunately, I can't select all of them at once, so I have to do one by one. Then click on the other one, desktop, structural river, and that is the last one. Open. As you can see, it's right here, and click on OK, and close that one. So if I go there, you see that I have the four of them. So this is the first step. Okay, now having imported those river cages, we just want now to reuse them. And this can be reused, you know, in any project over and over. You can see that here, these are of different sizes. The members, the columns, the bases are of different sizes and you still use the same river cages, okay? If you want to change the configuration, it's easy to, to have something as a starting point, then it will be easy for you to change you know, the diameters, you know, the configuration, if you have to add some more ribbons, then that would be very, very easy for you. But you love, you know, inserted the, you know, the starting point there in terms of the ribbon. 
Okay, so now having done that, it's just a matter of I'll start with the bad foundation and simply, you know, drag it within my project. I'll simply, you know, place it somewhere here. Okay, then click. Okay, then escape there. So I have the base there. Okay, then go to the starter bars. You know, simply drag it. I'm just holding the left mouse button and clicking there. Okay, then click on modify. You can see I have it there. I have to do this for, for the others. Select on that one, drag it, and I just want to have it right there. Just place it there. Escape by clicking on modify. Select there, drag it, and simply place it there and modify. Okay, I'll just click on OK. So as you can see, I have those. Let me even move it somewhere here. You can see that these are the 3D packages which you are going to, you know, to reuse. Now here, I grouped together with the top one. Okay, if I can even, you know, modify the group from here, I'll just double click there. Then I can select remove. I don't want that top part to be part of this group. I'll click on finish. So I should have done this within within you know when i was creating you know the the cage but even here i can still do that okay then if i select on that let me try to delete if it will not misbehave oh it's misbehaving i'll undo but i know that the group is right here so i'll simply leave it it's not it's not really a problem okay so let me get started with now you know placing the the, the ribber within my bases there okay these are of different sizes you know the thicknesses and everything so i'll simply go to this one then what you do is just you know remove the group then ungroup it then once you do that select on the that base then click on propagate and it's just a matter of clicking any base you know the size doesn't matter you can see some of them are thicker some of the sizes are bigger and it's still going to adapt as i mentioned make sure that you check the card above okay that is the lesson we are going to learn the principle of constraints of course there is more to that uh, to, to, to this than what i showed you there but if you just capture that principle you are going to master this technique and you'll be the fastest person in your office in terms of riba modeling so once you do that just click on finish you can click outside you see that the riba is there now you agree with me that uh, if you have to start cutting section and everything this can be done in seconds okay you spend a decent amount of time trying to model this okay right so what i'll do is to simply now select i don't need that because i was just using it to create it the next one are the starter bars so i'll come to this one once again select on it and any group okay click outside then what i'll do is to select you know that column underneath then click on propagate then i let me try to go to this one okay as you can see it's not picking the other one all right so what i'm going to do i'll simply continue i'll pick the top one to place the other one okay ideally i should have grouped everything together i'll show you later on how to group it okay i just missed you know the starter bars when i was grouping i'll show you that one later but as you can see i can start with the you know those stir ups everything is there this is quite parametric you just be clicking there Okay, so I, if I want, I can just end here and click on finish. Now, let me also do the starter bars. It's grouped under the top one. That's how I created it. So I'll select on it, propagate. Then I can simply go back and, you know, just pick that one, a similar one. You see that I'm going to have the starter bars. As I said, the, the, you know, the, the sizes for the columns are different, but it's still parametric. It adapt. Okay, so... If you start modeling like this, you are really going to enjoy using Revit, okay? And you never go back to AutoCAD. So I don't need this one again. I'll simply select and delete, okay? Let me go to the next one, which is this one right here. So what I'll do again, I'll select on it and ungroup it. Click outside, select that column and propagate. Then I'll simply go to this and I'm just picking this one there. I want to pick that one there of course i want that one and you now these ones i have to use the other one i can go behind and do the same i'll simply click on finish click outside i don't need this one i've already used it just select on it and delete it then go to the last one the top one okay so now even if the the height is different you find that maybe from one level to the other the heights could be different but if you model it in the correct way 
the way I did here, it's still going to adapt even, you know, in terms of the height, even the sizes, the cross section is going to adapt because this is parametric. So I'll select on it and ungroup it, click outside, select on it, then propagate. You see that if I go to this one, because that is the top one, you see that it's going to fit perfectly within there. Okay, I'll select on it, select on it. So I'll not finish the other one. I'll simply click on finish, click outside, simply select on that and delete. So you see that you can do this in you know some few seconds. No matter how big your project is, just make sure that you create those standard repackages. Okay. Now, if they, of course there might be variations, smaller, small variations here and there. In terms of, for example, if you just want to have maybe instead of you know three, you just want to have two and they. The, the size is different, okay? You see that within the rib bucket, it's not supposed to be RS16, Y16. You can change, okay? Why well, since this is something that you can easily do, then you know, placing the rib because you have to cut sections here and there, you know, which you, you spend a decent amount of time on it. But like this is easy. If I want maybe to change, I don't want three again. This is purely Revit. You can, you know, maybe maximum fixed number. You want to use fixed number. You just want to, as you can see, it will still adapt without a problem, as you can see from here. Okay. What is it? Right there, as you can see, we just have two. So you are going to be extremely fast if you use this method. Now, let me show you on how you can save, you know, these, you know, repackages. I've showed you on how you can reuse them. You can create your rib cages for the beams, the columns I have mentioned for any structural element. Make sure that you, you, you do it the correct way. So what you are going to do, for example, if you want to save, you know, this pad foundation, okay? Within a file, what you do is the following. Just make sure that you select, you know, the base. I'll just orbit like that. Then I'll simply select the base like that. You know, I just want to capture the ribber and the base there. Then once I do that, I'll simply click on create group, then click on OK. Then I'll just call it maybe group one. That's OK for me. I'll click on OK. All right. Then click on OK. Click outside. You see that that's the group there. OK. Now, if I just go down there, I see that I have group one, okay? So you are creating these groups after, make sure that you do the proper modeling and the constraints. Make sure that you check that video where we did river constraints, you have, you get those principles of river constraints. Now, once you do this, just a matter of selecting that group, right click and you know, you are going to save it where it's save, where it's save, save as a group. And I'll simply go to the same folder, which is right here. And I'll go it same as, I'll call it group one. Okay, because I just want to maintain the group. Group one right there and then click on save. Okay, so I can, you know, start reusing whatever I've saved there. You can, you can see that that is the group. Then if I want to save the starter bars, I have the starter bars there. I can simply start from there, make sure that I cover the starter bars and that column. Then I'll select on it. As you can see, I've selected that. If I want to isolate, I can do that so that you believe, but that is selected. Then I'll simply go to, uh, to group there. Just click on OK. I'll just call it group. You can rename it the way I was renaming. Then click on OK. Then click on OK, click outside. If I go here, you see that I have group two, then right click and save as a group. Then I'll go to that folder and that's the folder. I'll call it group two. Okay, group two and just save. Okay, so this is how you're going to do it. The most important thing is for you to make sure that you create the rebars within those, you know, uh, structural elements where you want to save those to save as templates, you know, in the 3D packages and reuse them over and over. Okay, so this is the method. I'll end here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you like the videos and make sure that you tell other people about this channel. More and more nice things should be coming on this channel. And make sure that you check the links in the description for anyone who would like to learn a lot of, you know, more things in my courses. So see you in the next tutorials.